man mice ran up in the house and shit. Oh, man. man. I'm talking yeah. about these motherfuckers have fucking machetes in their hand and shit, man. Bust. Yeah. Of course, the off they asses and shit, but. But you got this thing there. Yeah, those fucking immigrants over there, man. They do that shit. And it's, it's, it's all by design. That's what you people don't get. It's, it's, it's by design. They're coming in by the flood to create the issue. Right? So that they can bring in their agenda. Which is complete control. So pretty soon, hey, look, your summer ain't going to be a normal summer. This year, it should be no normal summer. Just being right. out. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 15. I jump in at verse 10. It reads, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plagues and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting and the hail, and with a fearful constellation. Woe to the world and them that dwell in it, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up against Salaki. So one people shall stand up and fight against another with swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their powers. That's, that's what you call anarchy. Right? That's everybody doing what they believe is right. That's prophecy in the scriptures. That's prophecy. We're telling you that that's coming. The Lord just said he's going to bring that upon Egypt. We're telling right. you that America is Egypt. That's right. He's going to destroy this place. And what Ezra saw was anarchy. Because he saw basically a lawless land, a lawless society. This man right here is like, you know, the book, the book of Eli. You know, he walked down under a tunnel to do the track. He took him out, he walks again. You see a man and a husband, a wife and her husband. So bikers run up, they may have to kill the husband. natural course of what can happen if there's a cyber attack, if there's lawless land, if there's an invasion, if there's war. This is natural things that's going to occur. The reason why we, it's interesting because it's realistic. You know what I'm saying? These are, and we're telling you that that's coming to this place, and it's really not us telling you it's prophesied in the Bible. That's right. Yeah, like I say, you can't say the Lord ain't first because he's giving you the warning. Been giving you the warning. Right, man. Always give a warning before he bring the storm, man. Right. I've been going to be for 80 years now. Right. And in the scriptures, there's something known as Jacob's trouble, which is what we're about to enter. Why is it known as Jacob's trouble? Because it's prophesied that in the last and last days of Trey and Tau, and our people basically will be on the bottom and will be afraid. You know, just like we're talking about how you got ungodly Israelites who say, but when all hell breaks loose, we're coming after you. You know what I'm saying? It's no different from Esau either. His attitude is, our society is crumbling, get them Israelites. And that's really always been the mindset from the beginning. There's a Tomo made against the Israelites. But coming down with great wrath, he's about to come down twice as hard on our people. And if you're dependent on this society, you trust in Egypt. And if you don't truly invest in the true riches, which is these scriptures, not some real estate, not money on this side, not the paper dollar, not crypto, not right. digital currency. This, this, this truth right here, when the time comes and Egypt fails, and those who lead upon it going to be fierce, then you out there by yourself. You trust the Pharaoh because you say his forces are fishing. You say, I'm in the government. Today. And that's another thing you're going to realize, really working for the government, you in the worst position. Right. You in the worst position. They're talking about the government shutdown actually within a week. That it's gonna go through another shutdown, right? What what's, what happens in government shutdown? 
no jobs. The government has to stop. Right. They have to wait for Congress uh, to vote on these 12 bills, right? And they're working for free for the most part. Right. But until they can get that figured out, those who work in the government, you gotta sit down. You know, uh, every time I go to the bank, it's primarily what women there. And they look the most comfortable. Why? Because they're working for a bank. They're thinking, I'm working for a bank, I'm good. Little do you know, you the ones that's gonna be the, the, the first ones to be in some shit and in some trouble. Because the day they fire your ass, they say, we don't need to tell us no more shit. Now you like with them. What I got in this bank? Oh, you work for the government. Uh, when Trump was gone, he had them shut down for a whole 30, 30 days. Man. And you have women on camera, please open it so we can get back to work. We need to get back to work. But guess what? The guy that's working at the restaurant, he's good. He said, go to work. He said, you work for the government. You think you can go safe? You're the most of these fucking dangerous. You're the ones that need And when you look up the rules for a government shutdown, the majority of those employees have to work for free. They have to shut down and they have to get off on vacation, whatever that is, report back to work and work for free. They have to, it's part of their, I mean, it's part of their uh, description. See? So, just like in the medical field, you think thinking you straight? Hey, look, I, I work in the medical field too. I had opportunity to stay, I said, hell no, that chick comes looking the fuck out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Because that, that's what he was saying, but I don't get it. You can just work here. No, that chip is coming, man. And y'all got this, you know, and then, no, I'm out of here, man. That chip is coming. But that's what the people think. Well, mom, I work for a hospital, so I'm, I'm secure. We always gonna have this up and running. So, yeah, when they bring that chip, guess who's gonna be the first one? It's gonna have law enforcement, <clears throat> and then the physicians in the medical field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. First one. Gonna be the first ones to be, you gonna have to get the chicken, okay? Right. You know what I'm saying? So don't think you're the most secure, because you're not. Alright? This is uh, Proverbs 22 and 3 in Reeves. A prudent man perceives the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. You know who that applies to? All you guys that are asleep. So the guy said, that, did he say, that I care the real man of the Lord? Did he say, prophet? He said, I as you became of the true prophets of the Lord. Okay, my question is, my what, what are they prophesying? <laughs> When's the last time, since all right, I prophesied of anything. Is he prophesying the destruction of the world? I don't think he is because he's too busy enjoying. He's too busy enjoying the clubs and the interviews. If you if he really wanted this place to be destroyed, Tattoos all over his body and face. This man letting this woman get plowed by by uh by other men on camera. Yeah, other men, man. Right. It's a contest, man. Yeah. Right. That's right. You never know, man. And then not one time on camera have you even rebuked him with the scriptures. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because of clout. Right. You, got a of, you got a lot of actors in this thing. They really don't want this place to be destroyed. They want it to go on. When Anna Pasta Hard Day 2024, hopefully you're in Jacob Trump, we rejoice in that they don't. They're hopefully like, no, I hope we good. I hope we I hope we're good. You know, like Slip Thug looking at uh, they look like Slip Thug. Slip Thug saying, we we everybody need to go up and flee because we need to get back to home. Well, is that any any different from the other Slip Thug like saying the same thing? You need to take this. You need to take that because the white man wants you to live. No, it's because one, you don't really care the Lord. You trust in the society. You want this place to go on. So, what are you prophesying? That's the question. What are you prophesying? The true prophets are going to tell you this place is going to be short. The Egypt is going to uh, 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 bring no more draconian measures. And even the smallest of crime. When you look up draconian measure, there was a uh, uh, Draco. He was doing the Roman Empire. He's known for his cruelty for even the smallest of crime. For something you might get just verbally lashed about or a few strikes or payback, he'll just say, oh, just kill him. Because he thinking with enough killing, people wouldn't do evil. And that was just harsh. And we're telling you that this man is about to do it again. Harsh. And the scripture tell you that it's really that prophecy, which is what uh, edifies. You 
God, I got um, Isaiah chapter 30. I'm going to start at verse 8. It says, Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, prophesy unto us right things, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit. exhortation and comfort. And he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. And uh, let's see. Then verse uh, five. Yeah, go ahead. And then verse 21. God. Verse 5. And I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh the tongue, right. except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Verse 31, reason it says, For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be comfortable. So you see prophecy and learn, everybody learns. It, it, it comforts and exhorts and it teaches. That's what the goal is here. That's what we do here. Right. You know, when's the last time you're a leader Sorry, I can prophesy in anything. But you will hear him talk about worldly affairs and things today, and games and stuff like that. Things that are not beneficial to the Bible. Not beneficial at all. And in fact, he hasn't, in fact, you ISUK guys haven't eaten the whole world. Because you still have an issue with Deuteronomy the 22nd chapter. In fact, you have an issue with Deuteronomy the 21st chapter about taking concubines of the other nations as spoils the war. So you haven't eaten the whole world. Yeah, they, uh, if I'm not mistaken, which, you know, I've, I've heard the ISUPK do say that, uh, Ruth was an Israelite. She was not an Israelite, bro. Ruth 
was not a Israelite. She was a Moabite. Yeah, they, they, they issue with the concubines and the spoil of war if they say, no, nah, that's not talking about that. That's talking about uh, she, she still got rights and all this and all this and all this stuff. So basically, right. you're offended. You're offended that that, that was a law. When that's we right. went to war and you saw a woman and you would take her, your concubine, you could take her. Take her, you have her born her family, 30 days. Yeah, uh, shave her hands, shave her, uh, her nails. Yeah. And she's, and now she's yours. She's yours. And you see, that that is her right. You could just take her. Like, you gotta let, go through the process. Right, right. So she basically getting incorporated to be in uh, her new life now. You're, you're, you're one of your wives. Right. right. Yeah, hey, she don't even get me started on the rape doctrine. Yeah, they so, got they got an issue. It's not even a doctrine, it's just it's just a protocol if rape was to happen. Like like when you go into that scenario, it's uh it's uh it's uh, three different scenarios, okay? One, you know, she was controlled. Uh, another one, she got taken, okay? And you know, and if and if she had a man and she cried out or she didn't cry out, then you take you take those measures. You know, hey, yeah, hey, you see, hey, right there, uh, Lafayette, mm -hmm. right there, the devil. Pro pro right. Proudly proclaim, right? Satan's yeah, <laughs> walking like a yeah, walking like Slender Man. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> 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 Satan is my family, man. Logically speaking, the minimum wage should, and, the, and, the, and the living cost should be to where you can work minimum wage and still survive. That's right. In this society, you work minimum wage and you still need a roommate. You still can't survive. So logically speaking, it don't make sense. So it don't even make sense for your wages to be so low when you can't even live like that. That's right. So a lot of people are fuming in their rage and they're realizing this is all one big goddamn scam. Right. Yeah, like, uh, you remember you showing us those, uh, those uh, Manhattan apartments. Oh, man. man that shit. Like, who the hell want to live like that? Oh, like, what the hell? Got, pretty much, got a bedroom, got a sink and a stove, all mixed in one. Then you got to go down the hall to use the shower. Yeah. Get the hell out of here. fucking prison. Prison, <laughs> shit. Yeah. Thousands and dollars a month. Yeah, like, but like wasn't it like it was like twenty five hundred uh, a, a month just for that like just to say you live in New York. You know? Just, that's a scam. You can't have a man. You can't even have a man. You let your brother have it in New York, man. And all the arguing come here. Shit, we outside the damn apartment complex and shit. Show up! You can't even uh can't even own a vehicle. I mean you can, but it's Right. I wonder what the purpose is. Uh, do New York have personal property tax? I'm not really sure. It didn't use it. Okay. 
So I yeah. don't know what they got now. Yeah, because all the money going towards the rent. They, right? <laughs> like, they figure wouldn't nobody be able to afford it. Most people in New York don't even, well, in the city, they don't even have a car. They just yeah. walk for them. Yeah. Well, so like, taxi, yeah. Like, that's stupid, man. So, like, like what does that tell you? Like, like where is the place to even put your car in? You know, like they, like they, they was making a joke off of it off of Futurama. He was all like, <laughs> for our, he was all like, yeah, nobody drove in New York. Like it was too much traffic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for real. Believe it or not, I mean, I guess that's what you call an oxymoron, but yeah, you know, it's it's true. And, and if you did have a car, you parked it on the street wherever you could find a spot. Right. You, couldn't, you couldn't park. You know, right in front of your building or nothing like that. Because once you leave, it's gone. You yeah. know, you might have to park four or five blocks away somewhere and walk to your park. Oh, man, that's crazy. Yeah. It was uh, showing that on everybody. Hey, Chris, too. It was driving around to that city park. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Fighting over the park. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know. Uh, back in uh, Isaiah chapter 3, in verse 3. The captain of fifty, and the honorable man, and the counselor, and the cunning artifice, artificer, and the eloquent orator, and I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them, and the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. And that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people, for Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his, of his glory. The show, the show of their countenance doeth witness against them, and they declare their sin is Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Right, and that's what we're telling our people. Part of the judgment that's gonna come upon Jacob in trouble, the reason why the Lord is gonna let it get that bad is because of our people's transgressions against the Lord, okay? First of all, they hear us out here teaching to them, and they smack the head. We ain't got no dealings with that. We don't care about it. They're going back to that black and black cat. He had told them guys several times over, I'm a worldly big nigga. I don't care about that. I care about here and now. I'm in America. He's telling you straight up, now, I don't care about the scriptures. I don't care about righteousness. I care about the here and now. I like Egypt, right? So the Lord said, okay, you going to feel it. Just like we're telling our, our people as well, look, y'all gotta stop committing the, the uh, iniquities that you've been committing, right? And understand what's right and what's wrong. And then you tell them what's right and what's wrong, and they say, I still want to do it because it's right. pleasurable to me. So the Lord said, okay, well, I'm gonna judge you then, right? Because it's really because they don't want to turn back to the Lord and have a good heart towards them. We're not, you can't expect a full 180, you know, and you perfect Israelite. You gotta have an attempt towards that. It'll be it's a blessing if you can. But, but no, I fuck this. I ain't doing it no more. That's a blessing. The scripture tell you, uh, the angels of choice over one sinner repent. But it's about turning back and understanding that one. First of all, you gotta let go of this aside. That's one of the hardest. What one, one of the hardest things for our people to do is to let go of this aside. Another thing that's hard for them to do is let go is to deny themselves. Right. I see a lot of Israelites today, these Israelite celebrities, such as say like the Tariya, the reason they don't want to hurt you to our message is because they have to deny themselves. Denying yourselves means you have to put your own driving uh, ambitions to the back, to the side, and say, what's the will of my Lord? That's really hard for somebody to do, really hard. Because we're in the flesh, you have things you may want to do, but the things you may you know, you want to do, may not line up with prophecy. You may not have time for this truth and what you want to do. And it's really hard for men to let that go. And because bottom line is, the truth requires sacrifice. You're going to have to sacrifice something in some way, shape, or form. 
everybody did. We've all had we've all had dreams and opportunities, plenty of opportunities that came up from our way where if we wanted to, we could have took it, but it would take us maybe out of this space. It'll have us doing something we ain't got no business doing, we ain't gonna fuck on the scriptures. And it find up the beard or Anything, maybe going to school in this country, for us to have opportunities to travel here and live here and all that other stuff, but it's because we believe in the scriptures is what drove us and many men to say, no, I can't go that route because I believe what's coming. And that shows you the power of belief. And that's why the scripture says, man, all right, for the most part, salvation is easy because you, you, if you believe in what's written, that right there is what's going to get you saved. Because you believe it's written. Yeah, a lot of Jakes, they uh, they they overthink it. I, I think uh, the truth is, uh, but they overcomplicate the truth. That's just it. No. Uh, well, what's the scripture where it says like uh, the Lord gonna make you a burden, or the Lord is the Lord's burden is like is it Matthew 16? I think. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's uh it's believing on the word. Uh, and, it, and it shapes your decisions and shape how you move and think. Because yeah. now everything you're doing, you consider the scriptures. You know, how, how many of us had a good opportunity with what we think would be a good opportunity with some woman or whatever the case is? You say, you know what? The Lord probably don't want me to go down that path. You know, you start to think about the scriptures and everything, and you believe his word. But it's, it's takes, it, it takes for you to believe in order to make that decision. Many Jakes don't believe. That's why they say, no, I could still be Hebrew and here's a light from the block. I mean, from dudes from the block. I could still be preacher, but I could still be, I don't know, you know, J block from, from, yeah. from the hood. Still. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, it's Sikar and real nigga. Dude, yeah, I could still be, I'm still chief priest. And don't fuck with me, though, because I'm still from the hood. Yeah, I got, no, I got a Hellcat and a Glock. I got a beard, ball cap, and my French. Yeah, so I'm gonna merge the two. So we're gonna go to camp, but I ain't. Kind of, yeah, I got it. We're gonna go to camp, but I ain't gonna. I'm, I'm, I'm still have my strap. I still got the fitted cap. You know, I'm looking. You know what I'm saying? So I can, I can merge the two. I can do both. No, have to shed off, shed off that old you. You know, the new you. And the new you embodies you walking in the stead of your house shine. And this is our strength, man. This is this is what. This is how you get your, so you can say, your, your respect or whatever the case is. You come out here and you teach the truth. But the denying yourself and saying, well, wait a minute. I want to be able to push my name and myself. I want to be looked at as a celebrity. I want to uplift myself. And I don't want to have to sacrifice that. So, I'll tell you what, I love the world and I also love the truth, so I'm going to merge the two. What the scripture says, you cannot have two messages. And, and it's, it's very easy. Jake think they can beat that. They all think they can beat that. I'm pretty sure Michael Jordan thought he could beat that. I'm pretty sure Denzel thought he could beat that. I'm pretty sure all the Martin Lawrence, he thought he could. Kevin uh, Kevin Hart literally said he, he, thought, he thought he could. I can still be respectable and a friend of the world at the same time and have my morals. And to see far in this, you're going to always come short. You're going to always have to make a sacrifice. And what has been proven is that the scriptures tend to let go of the scripture, they compromise according to the scripture to advance themselves in this world. Show me one Israelite in this world today who's highly respected by everybody and still kept his integrity in this world. You ain't gonna be able to find it. Because when he saw him to elevate them, they're gonna have to be the world. They ain't gonna have to be the world. So eventually you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be met with the gatekeepers and the gatekeepers are gonna say bow to us and if you say, and that's why you don't really hear about it, you know? Uh, back in verse 10 of Isaiah chapter 3, <laughs> say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. Right, and we're telling you, because
because you trust in Egypt and you don't really trust in this truth, you're going to reap the rewards of your faithlessness. Because really, you probably believe in the dollar. You secretly believe in Egypt and on Esau Edom. You believe in your real estate. Because, you know, every day you check in that bank account, you're like, good. Okay, so that's going to be your shame when Esau Edom puts a, 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 a block and say, you still want this. It's your money. But you got to take the chip. Yeah. You know? You got to take the chip. But think about it. You worked so hard for this. Yeah. And, 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 and you just don't come up with all the excuses. The Lord will want me to take the chip. He, he understands that I got a family. And that's what that's what's going to kill me the most. Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. Little did everybody know that, uh, that white Jesus says reports you, this guy right here, he, he's basically just a do as thou will spirit. You know? Like, sure. every time when Jake uh, do anything, he say, oh, well, Jesus would want me to have this. Nah, nah, nigga, you want that. You know what I'm saying? I got a precept. This is uh, Matthew 11, 28, and it reads, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Right. So yeah, kind of. Uh, so kind, hey, it's, hey, it's easy. You know, you got to keep yourself. Okay. Like, if you can get more money, get it. But if that's gonna get a, get in the way of you, uh, of you serving your how about Shemiah and Shine. You know, because uh, you got to know what you can and what you can't handle. You know, you got to be uh, balanced in this thing. You know, is your time and energy going going more towards folly or trying to get more money? Or is it going towards your how about your You know, it has to go towards your how about your And it really, okay. the truth really does make you free because when you see you work this close at the end, your mind isn't concerned about what other people are concerned about. I'm around Jake's and they're concerned. They're always talking about the same thing, politics, right? They're talking about Donald Trump. Trump and his I don't know what's been going on. Basically, yeah. yeah. a house of RV convention at the convention center party. That's the new, uh, that's the that new house trouble market. Right there, right? <laughs> Man, that's the Jacob's Trouble special. I should not put our money together and buy one. I'll take one of those and say, hey, fuck you, son. You know what I'm saying? Just a bit. Put it up. Put it up. Put it up. Put it up. Right. Find a way to live around. Not pay me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got a lot of uh, you got a lot of Edomites that got like whole things full of gas. You know, like they've been prepping for years. Shit, it's yeah. a uh, Edomite. He do he live off grid. This man got a uh, like some kind of treehouse built in the forest, where it's like mirrors built around it, so like it reflects all the trees around it and shit. So it's like walking in the forest. Uh -huh. You would look at it and you wouldn't know this is there and right. shit, bro. Right. These are like trees, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what's up, hitting the plane safe. Yeah. Back in uh, Isaiah chapter 3. Oh, yeah, the point I make this you, 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 Jake's out here around, often talking about the same thing. Retirement, you know what I'm saying? You need to you need to invest in this so you can be good. It's 10, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. You know, you know, when you find you a good woman, your children, you need to worry about this, that, and that. In my mind, I've been like, oh, I'm not thinking about none of this. And your mind is free. like, I just did my taxes yesterday. Oh, but you know what? Next year, if you want, you can put more in. No way. I'm like, look, I don't got to pay. That's all I need to know. I don't give a fuck about nothing else. I don't care about bringing home a stack, fat stack. I'm not worried about next year, hustling it up, daily bread. I don't owe you motherfuckers, I'm good. That's yeah. all I worry about. I'm free from the thought of the burden all that. I know that around the corner is our Lord. I'm not worried about it. But you see, that's the that's the type of vibration you're gonna get when you visit GMS video. You're gonna get hastened in the coming of the day. We can't say that about IHBK or IUIC. You're gonna you get this relaxed uh 
We gonna be here, everything's gonna be all right. You get this family building, you know, relaxed spirit. That's what you get. It's a light like party, y'all. It's a light like party, <laughs> chicken party. Uh, it was a chicken competition. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that's the type of operation you get. Days of Noah. From the other, yep, Days of Noah. Making merchandise. Yeah. That's right. You might get that Days of Noah in a mandatory course. $200 for a pass on. So, what's going to happen? Can you get uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5? I believe that's the piece of the same level. What's going to happen is that relaxed spirit is going to come as a stare into you. Because when it actually hits the fan, you're going to lose it. Because you didn't were prepared. And you all, and the, the people to blame is the people you follow. That's the people to blame. This is the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse uh, 36. But of that day and hour, Lord, no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the Son of Man, son of, it's like, as the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were, they, that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all the way, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It's going to happen again, man. And it all depends on what your mindset is, right? You got to be in the mindset of Noah. Build your spiritual ark so that you can withstand the flood, right? Because even Noah didn't know. He just waited for the commitment. Now's the time. Go in, right? He didn't do it. Ridicules and all. They were talking shit. You know they were talking shit. Why you laughing? He ain't already good. We getting them in the marriage. And the, and the giving in the marriage, that whole thing, you thinking about the future. You know, mm -hmm. having the wedding, just because you're having the wedding and stuff don't necessarily mean things are good now. So, you know, them guys in purple always talking about the weddings and they put weddings on the internet. That don't mean things are all good. Right, right, right. And which, you know, like, it's cool if you meet a woman, a good woman that, that love you and vice versa. I ain't mean, saying that. But the way how y'all doing it, like, that's just the only thing. Like, you looking for... This, you know, this came into be your stability. You know deep, what I'm deep down, that's what you think. And we see right. it in your actions. You're really relaxed. You know, the sisters over there, I, they just do fun stuff. Like, let's go around and see who understands this verse. Like, is this drill Bible, AI Bible? They do stuff like that. Fun. And they just doing it for fun. Ain't no hasten in the day over there. They just have a calm, relaxed. This is fun. I like coming here. And that's a, that's a lot of things with guys, especially in that group. You just like the fact that you, you know, you got somewhere to go. You got somewhere to go, you can be allowed, there's a light, you know, you got have fun, laughter, and all that other stuff. But the doctrine to you is, is least important. Because you, as long as you happy with where you at. So you don't care about the name. You don't care about the doctrine of that. You don't care about the hell doctrine. You don't care about all these other doctrines that clearly they're going off of. As long as you got somewhere to go. That's right. So it's not a priority to you. And you right. look at GMS guys as conspiracy nuts, crazy. It's okay. Because as as each month passes by and we covering this news, we get excited. We get excited. Do we have to uh, sit down every now and then and accept and it's about to get rough? Hey, of course. I think uh like like when the uh, like when the sea hill come in June, because I'm pretty sure that's the month it's gonna come in. Right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, hey, I, hey, I want to see the look on their face, man. I, I want to see the video that he gonna try to put up to justify this, man. Uh, Let's see what he gonna say, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, your views gonna go up a lot. GMS coming right to the comment board, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. Coming right to that comment board. <laughs> Once they even mention the word chip, that's what I want. Uh, got the, the chip. Ain't no way. Hey, hey, don't try to think this is the MOTV though. It's a small device. <laughs> this is uh 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'll just start verse 1. And it reads, But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that that day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Yep. 
For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So when peace and safety, then sudden destruction. So you don't want to be deceived by what seems to be good. Because you, you should be thinking, well, it was the same thing in the days of Noah. They were marrying, eating, feasting, and then the Lord brought them to destruction. So just because there may be, quote, good times doesn't necessarily mean things are good. You understand? So your spirit should always be watching and pacing in the coming of the day. That's what it should be, man. This is what we're telling you. This is what we're warning you about. The cuts in D.C., I hope that goes through. What about the people that's going? The Lord gonna make sure his elect is covered. Are you just saying that you ain't in DC? But look, I hope it comes here. I hope it comes here. You know? Let it happen. Let it, let it happen. And it has to happen to get to the, to the point, you know, when we get the hell out of here, it's so good. And, and you, you have to bridge the for the fact that Jacob's trouble has to happen before we can get to the end. Right, right. Meaning it has to happen. Yeah, we're going to probably lose everything. Oh. You lose probably your car, your PS5, your Xbox Series S. Internet over. Uh, your, your, your flat screen, your iPhone, whatever fucking number it is up right now. It, it doesn't matter, man. Like, we can't take none of this stuff into the kingdom. What else? My yeah, hell Yeah, hey, it's all going to be destroyed. Everything over here is going to be destroyed. Everything that I named going to be destroyed. The PS5 going to be destroyed. Flat screen gonna be destroyed. People gonna be destroyed. Right, right. right. Most importantly. Hey, but being the people's mind is, is, is Romans 8 and 18, man. The Lord gonna give us something better. That's yeah, right. You can't even imagine how on how far better and on a way higher level the things the Lord gonna give us, man. That's right. Hey, for yeah. enduring on this side. Right, shit. Yeah. Hey, that new body gonna be priceless. Right, exactly. You know, it's, it's gonna be immortal. Never gonna get sick. You're gonna have no wicked thoughts. Hey, it's, it's already gonna be uh, in the DNA of that body to uh, worship Yahweh by Shimei Okay. Uh, no, uh, like, no, 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 Chariot is priceless. Shit, a chariot probably worth more than this whole planet. <laughs> Shit, yeah, I was shot a chariot just as big as this planet. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, starting at the first verse. It says, Does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of the high places by the way and the places of the path. She cried at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things for my mouth shall speak truth and thy wickedness is an abomination to my lips all the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing forward or perverse in them they all they, they are all plain to him that understand me, and write to them that by knowledge receive my instructions and not silver rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I wisdom dwell with prudence. Which one? What, 11? Okay, uh, Proverbs 8 and 11. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Right, so nothing in this world is compared to this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures. This is what's going to keep your stability in the evil times. This is more important than any money on this side, like the other Apostle Bar said. For the people who sold out, which we know who you are, you 
you trade it, the, the real money for the fake money. Because this money in this world is temporary. Sure, it can live, let you live a temporal, comfortable lifestyle. But you traded the true, the true wealth, the true gold for vanity, for nothing. And now that we're at the end, like Cat Williams said, beginning of the year, you're 2024. You kept yeah, saying, I'm sure you know, really he said that, and I was like, yeah, you're right. Because now we're seeing the end of the contract of all those who took a contract with the devil. Right. From the celebrities even to the pastors. We're at the end. You know, now it's time. And if it's one thing you notice, like from that movie, which I couldn't share, it, but I'm going to block it. But the movie uh, is called Oh God, You Devil. Back in April. Just showing you, you know, how they believe how it works. You take a deal, contract with the devil for seven years. All up. Everybody take the deal, they want to get payments and all that. But one thing that's common, when it comes time to pay, they don't want to pay. They look for a way out. They ask yeah. for they ask for an extension. Right? Because they're really not expecting that day to come. But we're here to tell you that that day is coming. And for all the ones, the ponies, all the ones who sold out and took a bribe, you know what I'm saying? You took a bribe to take the name out of your document. You took a bribe teach a hell doctor. You took a bribe to say, you gotta get married, legally married to your mother. You took all that because in your mind, this is a worthy sacrifice for what I'm gonna do. The Lord appreciates what I'm doing this, and it's all right if I took the name out. That's a worthy sacrifice. Look, at least I got churches in, in Africa. The Lord said, first of all, the Lord didn't tell you to take no bribe. Okay, we got churches across the world, and the apostles never stepped foot over there. Right. You know, the Holy Spirit, you know, you really didn't believe that the Lord was capable of reaching those across the state. Yeah, but, yeah, without selling up. Just, uh, Excuse me. Like, without changing up the doctrine, talking about hell and Christ, and all the nonsense. Yeah, you did that for you. And the scriptures tell you that you can pass sea and land to make one cross the light and make them worse than you. So, all your deeds are all written in the scriptures. All right? Because you really didn't have faith. For all you guys that took the bag and sold out, for all the ponies, this is your time is up. You right. see, it. it's, it's getting it's getting worse and worse for you across the body. Hey, GMS, we just keep teaching this word and throwing the jabs out there, right? The spiritual jabs, teaching the doctrine. Whereas you other isn't like you see phony, you get exposed left and right. You being called hypocrites and all that. You're showing that your fruits ain't 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 People are looking at you like, wait a minute, you said this and you said that, but we see that that's not the case. Right, what you doing? That goes to the T.E. Jakes, and uh, uh, that's, the, that's the recent one, right? Yeah. Kurt Frank. Yeah, Kurt Frank. All, all of these guys are all being exposed. It's the, the, the deal that the devil was basically up, man. <laughs> now T.D. Jakes then uh, sued Gino Shanks. <laughs> from saying anything about his situation because he was on his case but he had got the feds involved like man we, we finna look you know they try to sick him on Gino Gino so it's like yeah man they, everybody scrambling now that the light is, is shining on man those who in the bed with the devil mm -hmm. like we was talking about you women even on the level of this society you trust out you sold out to the devil you trusted him now you about to pay you know what I'm saying you know the truth really does make you free. And just like when I get around my family, I have less to say. I got no more to say. I, got to say. I know the truth. So I just sit. Y'all, because I know in my mind, y'all pride is, is, is just that it's pride and it's vain. And, you, and when the time is going to come, guess who number you going to call? Yours truly. Because I'm sitting. You can say, I'm just, I'm not saying nothing. I'm no longer approving to you. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's okay because I know it's coming down the pipe. Right. I, I've accepted, you know, we've accepted that the evil times are near. We put our trust in your how about shit now. That's right. To protect us, to provide for the trust. You don't know how it's going to Yeah, yeah. 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 hey, and most likely it's going to happen this year. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's looking like. Mr. the truck. It's election yeah. year, man. And you know they always run some type of scheme on election year to push votes. You know what I'm saying? Dumb, uh, so on, brother. No pandemics. It's gonna come right when it's election time to push for what? Votes. And guess who's gonna get affected? The 
poor. That's what they got going on. I've seen a lot of this, uh, these, these so-called black women. I don't care what nobody said. I'm leaning towards Trump now, you know, because, you know, what? This man dropped some shoes and y'all and, and, and just lose y'all mind and y'all talking about he a criminal just like, uh, right. I don't know. Yeah, no, like I seen, seen that shit. Old, like man. he said, like like black people like divorce since you since you got locked up or whatever. Niggas for Trump. Yeah. Man, man that shit crazy. Well, he say I'm a nigga and I'm for Trump. <laughs> Those are guys <laughs> trusting <laughs> either. You can't just save them people, man. You can just let them. You just like okay, you Trump. Let, we just gotta let them perish, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. like like they like they they literally don't see it. You know, hey, to the people that's enlightened, that's. That's um, awakened to this truth. Be like, how can y'all not see this? Like, do you even believe in the Lord? She's like, damn. And like, even then, um, and, and the scriptures is clear about not putting somebody over you that's of another nation. Right. You know. Right. So they transgress it anyway. Right. See, like this person, like those people, they they really don't want the kingdom of heaven. They even got Israelites that really don't want the kingdom of heaven. He didn't do it See now, you just, you just slap a Nike sign on it. Hey, it's gonna sell. You're gonna have all the sneaker heads buying it. All oh, yeah, niggas doing uh sneaker reviews and shit. Like just like them uh um, them like y'all remember them them, them little Nas Air Max 97s oh, yeah, that yeah. came out? They sold out yeah. like right. then, yeah. had the um had the pentagram on it. And all yeah. that man. And then they came out with some Jesus. Nike shoes with some holy water for them. Right, right. Yeah, I remember that too. So yeah, man. Like, like, like this. This whole life is just vanity. Like, when you really think about it, like, like what matters, man? Food, water, clothes, shelter, and a little bit of uh, unity and love. That's it. Like, that's the only thing that matters. By their fruits, you shall know them. Okay. So the scripture, Yahweh Shah spoke several times about he that, that my heavenly father have not planted would be rooted out, corrupt trees, bring up corrupt fruit. Meaning you gonna have what? False false pastors. You're gonna have false prophets. Because you gotta tell all oh, why y'all always rebuke it, because Yahweh Shah did. What do you think what he meant when he said a, a, a corrupt tree can only bring forth corrupt? And you will know them by their fruit. Meaning you're going to have people who the Lord didn't set up, bring forth badness, bring forth bad, mad doctrine, prophesying lies, and then you're going to examine the men that followed him and the people that followed him. You're going to say, yeah, this is a false prophet. And what did he say? The heavenly, what, my, every plant my heavenly father not planted will be rooted out. So eventually you're going to get your judgment too. So yes, rebuking the false prophets is a part of this ministry. And if you don't have it in you do that, then that just means this job isn't, you aren't the man for the job. Right. Because part of teaching the truth involves correction. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it involves correction. No, the true name of the Lord is this, and this is the true name. Anybody that's telling you different, there's a scripture to tell you, you gotta watch out for it. And that involves correction and rebuke. Right. And you had a uh, uh, priest, uh, priest, priest Daniela. You know, which I don't really hear nothing from him before. Sakari got that that uh, Hebrew hip hop award. You know, like this nigga was acting like he was in the kingdom of heaven. Oh yeah, thanks, son. That a man, thanks. You know, and it, this really mean a lot to me. <laughs> like he won a damn Oscar or something. Coming up again. That's right. Right. 
Right, we sell it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, like, 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 who the hell even cares, man, about Sonetta, man? Like the, like Sonetta's whole, whole, uh, I guess, stick is basically coming against the Israelites. You know, trying to get them to prove their point. I mean, we've been already told you multiple times. Like, how many times do we got to keep going over? You know what I'm saying? Like keep keep saying the same thing over and over again. But hey, that just shows you what the mercy of your whole bunch of people. You know? Shit. Uh, Isaiah, back in Isaiah chapter three, in verse uh, twelve. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Oh my people, they would lead thee, cause thee to error, and destroy the way of thy paths. People really are telling you that they're bringing you really back to Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have to. Hey, you know? when, you, when, you, when, when you get on them, that's how blind they are. When you get on them and expose the, you know, the, 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 the uh, wolf that she blow, they get mad at you. I know. Like, okay. you know, like, shit, Jake look at you like a fucking party boy. You know, ah oh, man, you disturbing my sleep. You know? Guess what? It's like, it's next, like, I'll oh, go ahead, bro. Uh, so I get the next five steps is death, man. That's right. And then if somebody warning you, you get mad at the person warning you. Right. Hey, all right, you know, we, we passed the stage of getting mad and huffing and puffing, going back and forth. Hey, you don't take heed, then that's on you, man. Right. Yeah, this year, the Lord got so much in store for this year, Lord's willing. And I'm going to join every right. second of it. That's man. right. Right. Because I, it's, hey, like when that whole whack ten hundred thing going on, right? And you have brothers like Captain Drake, you know. And in my mind, I said, hey, I hope y'all ain't gonna try to take y'all time. Correct? Stop that. Let him get involved. You know, we didn't warn enough. And then let let that let them fall into it. Let, let them see the rewards of their, you know, them going against the scriptures, right? Being unequally yoked to the unbelievers. We've been warning them for years. Let them see what happens. Man. Fuck them. Fuck them. We've been warning them for years. You know, some brothers are like, look, man, you need to stop me. I said, hey, look, fuck, we've been warning them for years. Let them follow to it. You know what I'm saying? It's at the point now where the, the Lord's going to make his, the Lord's he's going to make a short work. You know, we're going to see his work in the, in the hell with trying to warn you motherfuckers. And I'm talking about the ones that's supposed to know. We still gonna edify the sheep. But the ones that's supposed to know, who think that the way of Yahweh Shah is weak, who think that free weak, really they think Yahweh Shah is weak, who think that Paul is the man of the Lord, who think John the Baptist is the man of the Lord, they got to go in there, okay, I think you got the truth, we gonna see. When they bring that shit, we gonna see what you're gonna do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's it. Okay. This is uh, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 13, and verse 1, and it reads, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesied against the prophets of Israel that prophesied, and say thou unto them that prophesied out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit, and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like foxes in the desert. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, Neither made up the herd, it's like it, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle of the day of the Lord. What is that hedge? Good enough for faith, spiritually. So to come out here and warn the people of the evil that's to come and say, Thus said the Lord, march laws around the corner, anarchy is around the corner. Uh, they coming with the UN troops, they trying to make it permanent. Okay? All uh, the women who isolated yourselves, you believe in the system, you in trouble, you need to humble down, come back to the Lord. You're supposed to go out to the hedges and warn the people of what's to come and build them up spiritually. Not tell them to invest in crypto, not tell them to invest in some real estate, not get a bunker, anything like that. Invest in this truth. This, uh, 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 can you give me, uh, uh, I, talk, I believe it's Isaiah 50. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's not. not yeah. 
come in, bro. It's not 2008, man. It's not, it's not 2008 and 9. Okay? Oh. Yeah, this, this place might already be destroyed. Right. You're supposed to come out to the edge and compel the people to come back in. And as the brother read, he prophesied to them because so they all may learn. Because when you prophesy the destruction of Babylon, then you go into, well, why does Babylon have to be destroyed? Well, because they break the law, statutes, commandments, and scriptures, and they have the Lord's chosen people in chapter. Who is the Lord's chief? He chose people. He is a what? What makes us special? The Lord chose us again and bam. So called black ones who they burned and met. Esau is the devil. He's our wicked to his brother. He bad because he's only a fighter. His name is Edom. We got the birth like bam. So you covering so much. Everybody's learning about prophecy. Okay, if I came out here and prophesied to you my own heart, then let's say. Itching ears, that's what I want to hear right there. Yeah, yeah. He's talking about right. He talking to y'all. He talking about right now. He talking about building the black family. That's what I want to hear right now. We're going to tell you, as according to what Paul said, be more concerned about the scriptures. They that have lies, be as though they had none. Are you free? Seek not to be mine, and are you wise? Seek not to be loose. Hasten in the coming of the day. Worry about the moment right now. Know that don't expect perfection. You got to get it right. Look, it's a Lord, when it happens, but you can't worry about that right now. See, we're telling you to look forward to the kingdom. The false prophets are going to say, no, we need to worry about here, this here, right now. All right? That's how you determine the true prophets of God. Who's actually prophesying to you the coming of the Lord? All right? Verse uh, 5. It's like in verse 6. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, the Lord said, and the Lord have not sent them. They have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say the Lord said it? I bet I have not spoken. Therefore they said the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies. Therefore behold, I am against you, said the Lord power. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity that divine lies, they shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord of power. And what is, when you study the scriptures, what was one thing the false prophets, most of them always prophesied? Peace. When there is no peace. Let's say it before. Why? Because you put the people's heart at rest by prophesying peace and prosperity. That was one of the main things. When the Lord called them false prophets, it's because the Lord don't got peace promised to this place. Why he got peace promised to this place? This is the land of our captivity. He has to destroy this place of deliverance. You got people talking about shit. Yeah, you invest in this. Invest in this. Man, all my time goes towards the home of our shit. Okay? All right, yeah, and, and my daily bread. See, like, if I was more focused on money, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even have time for your whole much You know, like, this, this is what the scripture says, you cannot worship the most high and mammon. Okay, like, here it is, you're trying to build a business. Okay. But you, you, you haven't done a video today. Or, um, 
and you haven't read the scripture all, all, all week, or you haven't done nothing concerning the truth. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 55 and 1, and it reads, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. You see, that's it. This is how you come and buy without money. You get a little of your time. You said, hearken unto me. Right. You're listening. You believe it. This is how you uh, uh, obtain, you know, you eat of that whole bread, right? And, uh, and uh, be fed from the, the waters of, of uh, uh, everlasting, everlasting, everlasting waters. This is how you do this without money by simply hearkening and believing. And you're giving the Lord your time and you're here and you say, hmm, I believe. That's how you can increase, you know. That's how you can get the it says buy the truth and sell it. How do you buy the truth with your time? You know, you read, you study, you believe what's written. You're looking at the prophecies and you and you're shaping your the way you think and how you move based around the prophecies. Exactly. This is how you, you buy it with your with your time. You know what I'm saying? And uh, our job, since we have it, we eat the whole world, we come out as commanded and let everybody else know. The elect of our people, because we know for the most part, it's going to fall on their people. The Lord equipped, them, equipped us with everything we need to go before our people and the other nations as well, because we got to stand before them too. They judgment as well. We gotta tell them they judgment too. So we tell them Esau eat them looking for them as well. Why? Because it's that and that. Right? We telling our people, if you don't want to hurt you, you're gonna be destroyed because this, that, and that. Right. So we ain't gonna get shocked when we say, well, why ain't the majority of our people listening? The Lord said two thirds of our people are gonna be destroyed. Hey, that's what the Lord said, blessed are you eyes for this year. Neither do they understand. And in them is prophecy. And in them fulfilled is the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and not and shall not perceive. But his people part as wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, least at any time that they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see, and your ears for they hear. And verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. That's right, so you gotta understand the Lord has blocked the understanding to two-thirds of our people. You know? Why? Because the Lord already looked inside of them and he saw, you know, the vessel that's unfit to receive this gospel, to receive this word. Because of a yeah, broken sister, because of victory, whatever the reason, the Lord knows the victory, he's going to trade it under his foot. He's going to eventually turn his back. And the Lord takes it personal, and he takes, he goes out of his way to make himself known to you, only for you to take hold of it, and then end up throwing it away for the world. The scripture says you're going to have it worse. You're going to get beaten with a few stripes. You're going to be, you're going to be like, you're going to get beaten with more stripes than the scoffer. Because you actually took the something that was holy and gave it back to, you know, and basically said, uh, this ain't it. Right. Well, yeah, you, you're basically saying that the Lord's, uh, the Lord's rising up standing of the scriptures is, is useless. Okay, you said, yeah, I got a better idea. Like, no, man. That's 
why the Lord blocked me understanding from most of these people because that's exactly what they've gone through because they have done it in the past. So the Lord said, blessed your eyes for you see and understand. So understand that this is a gift, right? And you want to take hold on this treasure and restore your treasures and invest in this so that you can reap from, uh, you know, the whole point of a saving is to pull from it in time of trouble. You invest in this, and you're gonna be able to pull from it in the kingdom, uh, in the times of trouble. By one, believing your arms, your deeds, and everything you're doing. The scripture says that he is not forgetful to forget your works that you've done. He knows what you've done. He remember everything you did that you, you don't even remember. You know, every now and then you may get a comment from a video that you did seven, seven years ago. <laughs> And the, and the brother, thank you, brother. This is edifying. You wouldn't even remember doing it. Right. <laughs> but obviously the Lord saw it because he guided that brother to find that video. He said, yeah. So, and that, that helped build him to say, yes, this is the truth. You know? So the Lord sees everything that you've done, and he's not going to forget that. And he looks upon you. He looks upon you, your family, your loved ones. You know? So you're going you to find comfort. That's why if you really are going to be, you're not burdened with the, the, the burdens of the world that they're so concerned about, overly concerned about, the immigration, the, the, the cuts, you know what I'm saying? They, the, the people who ain't got this truth, they're overly concerned about that. You like good, let it happen, prophecy. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that means we're closer to home, man. All right. Uh, the more these prophecies come, the, the closer we are to, to the Lord changing us, man, man, man. Put setting the world aright, man. We be tired of this shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh how should I come back to pick up seven? Number seven will read that last one. Uh I have read that particular letter. Yeah. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter eleven and verse one. And it reads Moreover, the Spirit lift me up and, and brought me unto the east gate of the Lord's house, which looked eastward. And behold, at the door of the gate five and twenty men, among whom I saw Yazaniah, the son of Azur, and Pel Peladia, the son of ben Benaiah, princes of the people. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief and, get, and give wicked counsel in this city. So let's see what this wicked counsel in this city, this passing fucking dream, right? Go ahead. Verse three, which say, it is not he, it is not near. And um, let us build houses. This city is the cauldron and we, we be the flesh. So that's a wicked counsel to basically prophesy peace when you say, it is not near, meaning the prophecy that the prophets are saying about the destruction and all that, it ain't near. We ain't gonna see it in our lifetime. And we gonna be long gone. Let us build. The city, you know, we be the flesh and the city is the cow drive. Meaning, this is our comfort, this is our shield. The Lord said that's wicked counsel. Why? Because your mind isn't supposed to be to stay in Egypt. You're supposed right. to be one to get the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah, like we, like we gonna uh, stay here and simmer. You know, you know, get all nice and hot and ready. Yeah, you get all nice and hot and ready to be devoured. So you, you know? see that that prophecy of peace, they always came with that. And you gotta read the scripture say the Lord ain't prophesied no peace. So he said he's gonna bring destruction to this place because I'm all his wickedness. And he talked about it, Jacob's trouble. So you gotta watch out for that, man. Because those who have the itching ears want to hear the, the things that's pleasant to the ears. Peace, prosperity, we're gonna be good. Worry about nothing to be good. That's 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 actually dangerous. You gotta watch out for individuals like that. They're just telling you what the natural man wants to hear. They're telling you what your mind wants to hear. storm or whatever you know adversity come you want to be aware man anybody telling you to not be aware and not pay attention they got it they, they they paid off they got an agenda they want to see you uh, uh fail you know they, they 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 not they don't have your best interest at heart man 
So when that chip calls, man, that's gonna be a straight up scare to you people, man. Because you're told not to worry about it. It ain't the mark of the beast. So naturally, a lot of you gonna take the chip. Because you're gonna say, well, my pastor told me that that ain't the chip. I mean, that that ain't the mark of the beast. So for all I, for all I know, I can take that and still be safe. And that's what a lot of you gonna do. And best believe your leaders, a lot of them are gonna say, well, wait a minute, we didn't tell you to take it. But guess what? They just said it's not the mark of the beast. So that's, that's <laughs> blood on your hands. Because they, they can say, well, look, with all due respect, what you're giving me now is advice. I don't need your advice. If I'm not breaking the commandment, I'm gonna take your chip. So that's blood on your hands because they listen to no way. Ain't no, ain't no gray areas. It's like when, that, when the road is leave up hand, they can't be a man, so we say flat out, no. No if and some buts, no. But, what if I lose my blood again? No. So you can't be a man, that answer was no. No gray areas, no room for you to say, well, I listen to them and they, they kind of hinted that it'll be all right. No. The answer was no. Okay? And now, when you went to the other groups, you can't say that. And they don't think that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. Right. Yeah, yeah, like, you basically leaving, like, gray zone areas for sin. You know? Tell them it's okay to, to, to go against a, 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 a man. Right. Yeah, like, even the uh, the uh, prequel with the, you know, with the jabs, you know, that was just a, a, a prequel to uh, the MOTB. You know, the MOTB is a sequel. You know, the Lord gonna have to... You know, yeah. uh, finish y'all off after that. First, they put the operating system in you. Right. You know, they told you on the website it's an operating system. So <laughs> you got nano nano technology in you now. Right. See, yeah. see, now, now when they roll it out, oh yeah, you, yeah, he got you. Okay, like you Israelites, are, like man, look, if you're not in, in the truth, you are you are literally a psychopath. You know. You're exposed to all the wiles of the devil. That's mm -hmm. that's what you don't want to be. You're right. out there to the wiles of the devil now. That's what we telling our women. You're exposed now. You isolated yourself. Oh, now, now you're at the wiles of the devil. Yeah. And, and, and now you made a, you made yourself such a disdain to your husband, to your father, the child of your father. Now he don't even want to take you. So you I really see you get your job. You, you really <laughs> out there by yourself now. Right. right. You're exposed to the wiles of the devil. That's a horrible position to be in. Right. It's just, uh, hey, this is only the beginning, man. Like, hey, the Lord is literally cooking you people, man. Like, you people get, are getting, uh, you know, burnt alive in the spirit. And eventually, you know, the missile is going to come, you know, fin finish the rest of you off. And, you know, you're already dead inside. You know, your body just had to die. Walking dead. That's all you jigs out there are. Scripture says that he, she doesn't live with the flesh Excuse me. I went to the shuffle and I did a nine o'clock. I went in that time y'all see y'all. Uh every Sunday. Michael King. 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 Therefore prophesy against them, prophesy, O son of man. And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said unto me, Speak, thus saith the Lord. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Ye have multiplied your slain in the city, and ye have filled the streets thereof with the, with the slain. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, your slain whom ye have laid in the midst of it, they are the flesh. And this city is the cauldron, but I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. Ye have feared the sword, and I will bring a sword upon you, said the Lord Yahweh. And I will bring you out of the midst thereof, and deliver you into the hands of strangers, and will execute judgments among you. Ye shall fall, you, <laughs> Salaki, ye shall fall by the sword, I will judge you in the border of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. This city shall not be your cauldron, neither shall ye be the flesh in the midst thereof, but I will judge you in the borders of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. 
For ye have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgment, but have done after the manners of the heathen that are round about you. And it, and it came to pass when I prophesied that Pelatius, the son of Benai, died. Then fell I down upon my face and cried with a loud voice and said, Ah, Lord Yahweh, wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel, holy are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get ye far from the Lord, unto us is the, this land given in possession. Right, so they had that mentality. This is home right here, right? So that, that attitude of, you don't have to worry about the king. That's the problem with the Lord. And the Lord has a problem with when he says something's gonna come to pass, and you come up and say, no, it ain't. You got a problem with that, because you're basically making him a liar. That's a problem. So that's why we say, eventually them guys are mouths are gonna be stopped, because you're literally lying on the Lord. Right. When you teach a hell doctrine, you're lying on the Lord. You're really changing the image of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? You're turning him out to be some type of angry. You got a power that is angry with people for help. But he tells you that his indignation is toward the wicked. And he's gonna have compassion and mercy towards the Israelites. You making him out to be a merciless power. That's lying on him. He never created no hell. Alright? Just one to one. Get his power straight to heaven and earth. Where is this fucking hell place called? He never intended on there to be in a place where souls go to dwell in torments forever. He never intended on that. Satan don't run shit. Satan, Satan, essence to the Lord. That's right. Okay? Ain't no battle. What? What? You know what I'm saying? So that attitude, uh, basically, they're not prophesying the truth. And they're really not prophesying the truth. They're just talking about the here and now, and you need to be concerned about the here and now, and keeping the commandments, as if the law is supposed to save you. The law is righteous, but we're going to be saved by mercy, faith, and grace. By grace and mercy. See? This is the book of 2nd Ezra, and I started 6. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, right, chapter 7, starting at the 6th verse. There is also another thing. A city is built and is set up on a broad field and is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire set on the right hand and on the left a deep water and only one path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could be one man go there at once. If this city now were given unto a man for an errand, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord Yahweh. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel portion, because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was the then was decree that now is done. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the entrance of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. If then they have, I'm sorry, if then they that live labor not to enter these straits and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. Right. Now, so that's what you should understand, okay? The times that's coming, the troubles of times, understand that that's laid out for us because that's just a decree that was made. Pre Adam sin, we were good. You know what I'm saying? But now we have to earn the kingdom and we have to go through it by the straight gate, which that where the straight goes into a position of difference. It has to happen, right? You know what I'm saying? So you're going to have to be prepared to be uncomfortable. We're going to be uncomfortable, but the Lord's going to take care of us. 
And once you once you brace yourself to accept that, everything else tends to fade. Every, all the noise in the background tends to fade. Because you're not concerned about the things you heard other people concerned about. You're not shook enough as other people are shook enough about. You 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 saying this is prophecy and the Lord is bringing it. And the Lord said, just because you believe that, he's gonna take care of you. But believe it or not, it's hard for people to do. It's hard for some people to do. Because it requires the denial of the future. It requires the denial of this world. And put it to the side and say, I, I believe in that which I can't even see. I know it's coming. I can't even see it, but that's what I believe. and panicking it, you know, uh, uh, like like the rest of these people gonna be, man. Right, hey, food tastes better when it's cooked, man. Okay, so hey, the process that we gotta go through, we gotta go through that furnace of adversity to be purified, man. To eat some raw ass meat, hell no, man. We're gonna cook this shit, man. I mean, could the Lord have made it to where we just transitioned to the kingdom, carefree? Yeah, that's, that, that's not how you do yeah. Like, yeah, we're the appreciation. Yeah, that's what it's about. Yeah. Appreciation. So he got it all laid out, man. You have to go through the hard to get there. The things that's coming to pass. It's a necessity for us to get there. Hopefully you accept that. Your brother accept that. Be a last statement. All right. So with that, we're going to give our questions too. We got Howl, uh, Shimmy, I was shy by Shimmy Kakadash. I'm not sure about that. Uh, well, 